Hello friends. Is it too dark? No, I'm like working with the light here. It is really dark outside. It's like pouring rain. Pouring, raining. Anyways, it's raining outside. Anyways, let's get to it. Um, I decided to do actually the verse of the day today. Um, and also what the Lord has been speaking to me through my Bible um, devotionals in the morning. Um, and reading through or going through what it is that I read this morning and going through what the verse of the day is. They pretty much go hand in hand and I think that's amazing. I feel like that's how God works in so many ways and so many times. So yeah, let's get to it. So the verse of the day I find in the version app. Um, it is an app, it's the Bible app and um, it actually every single day pops up pretty much a different Bible verse for you to meditate on and to, um, yeah, to read um, and to go deeper in. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and today's verse of the day is actually found in the book of Galatians. Galatians is in the New Testament um, and it is Galatians chapter 5 verse 14. So I'm going to read it and then we'll discuss it. Um, so it says, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, even where it says, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. The whole law, meaning just even the whole, um, the list of laws that were given to us in the Old Testament. Okay, so um, even the Ten Commandments um, and all that, the majority of the Ten Commandments. Um, and every law that was given to Moses when he was in Mount Sinai to give to um, the Israelites. Um, I love here how it says, uh, yeah, that it, it all is fulfilled in one word. Pretty much the whole theme, the whole reasoning bef uh, before God or the reason why he gave us all these laws can all be fulfilled and boiled down to one word. And not one word as in just like one exact word, but one word as in one statement, okay? And that statement is that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, this is something that we say, and we as Christians say, okay, this is how you're supposed to um, act, and this is obviously the fulfillment of the law, which is to love, you know, each other. Um, your neighbor is could physically be your neighbor, or it could be anybody around you. Um, that we are called to love them as ourselves. And this is no easy thing to to do. This is an easy thing to say, but it's not an easy thing to do. Even, honestly, when it comes to, like, my children, um, who you would think is somebody that we love with all of our hearts and we're just so unselfish when it comes to them. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like when it comes to my kids, I do see their needs, you know. But there is times where, honestly, I fail. There's times, even today, I feel like, that I get mad or I get frustrated because they don't do things my way. And honestly, it shows that I'm not loving them as I do myself. Um, and even just that com concept of saying loving them as yourself. The reason why they say this, right? Or even I feel like the reason why this is said in those scriptures is because when I think about it, I don't love anybody <laughs> selfishly. I don't love anybody more than I love myself, right? Like we are just naturally very selfish people. Um, who do things and, um, you know, the, our motives a lot of times for doing things are for it to be beneficial for myself. And that's why I feel like when it says that to love others as yourself is to love others, you know, more than yourself, all right? Because I love myself above anybody. So in that way, I should love others above myself. Um, and this reminds me of even just Philippians 2.13. And uh, Philippians is a book that we went over, um, yeah, I believe like a month ago we went over, we finished it. Um, two thir well, Philippians 2.13 says, Do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. And that goes hand in hand with loving them as yourself because I love no one more a lot of times than myself. So that is the same attitude that I should have, you know, um, in front of others. And just looking at that, I'm like, man, that, that's pretty hard, right? And um, I love how this is not something that is just told to us to do and say, here you go. Like Jesus is like, like, here you go, do this and figure it out. And no, this is something that we see and that we saw and that we can read in the life of Jesus. Um, and this is how, even looking at the verse a day, how it goes hand in hand with what I was reading this morning. So I'm going to the book of uh, John myself. And I came across, or today I had to read John 13. Um, and I read here the story of how Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And I'm like, huh, that's so, you know, that again, that goes hand in hand with even our verse that we're supposed to count others, you know, or um, love them as ourselves. 
And I love how Jesus here shows you clearly how he does it. Um, does it mean that we have to go around washing everybody's feet? Um, maybe, I don't know, but just the attitude behind it of how he did it and why he did it. So I kind of wanted to go through that story really quick because I think it paints a very clear picture and how it is that we're to love others as we love ourselves and actually consider them more significant than ourselves. So, um, so in John 13, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He showed them up until the very end how it is that they are to be loved and how, I mean, how are they supposed to love others? And he poured himself into them. It says here, he loved them to the end, to the very end to when um, he was going to, you know, die for their sins, be the ultimate sacrifice. He continued to love them till the end. Verse 2, it says, during the supper, so they had a supper right before the feast, right before the Passover. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. So Jesus already knew that, Jesus, that Judas was going to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. So right before he washed the disciples' feet, it says here that Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. Meaning he knew who he was and who he stood before the Father. Meaning he was God himself. This was Jesus, all right? The Bible says that everything was made for him, through him, for his glory, all right? Um, and he was God himself. And he was God the Father's son. So he knew all authority was under him. He knew that he is it. Jesus is it. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And he knew this already. So he's here saying, even I, being Jesus myself, am doing this. All right. So when we are called to love on others, it's not like we're supposed to just put ourselves last in the sense of um, have really small self-esteem. OK. And just say, OK, I'm not going to think of myself. I'm a poor Annie. I'm not, you know, my self-esteem needs to be really, really down. I am a nobody. No, that's not what it's saying here. We know who we are. We know that we are, you know, sons and daughters of the King of Kings. We know our position. So that is enough for us that is enough um reward in our hearts and that should compel us to love on others so they can really see god for themselves as well so we're not humbling ourselves here because we think less of ourselves and because we have need to have a low self-esteem no we know who we are just like jesus knew who he was he's the king of kings the lord lord of lords and he knew that he was confident in that so it's not like he said, okay, I need to think of myself as poor Jesus to be able to wash, you know, these disciples' feet. No. And that's not the attitude that we should be having either. We know we, who we are. We are rock solid in our position as far as that we are redeemed sinners before, you know, God himself. And we, he is our father. And that should be enough for us. So humbling ourselves is not putting our self-esteem down, but you know, exalting others in order to show them the love of God, all right? So that is what Jesus is showing, saying here. Again, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose from, from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, meaning his jacket or whatever, put them to the side, and taking a, to a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So he did something that servants did. Back then, servants did that, okay? They would humble themselves. That's, I mean, their job. They had to wrap a towel, you know, around their waist and they would wash the, the feet of the people who were coming into the house because back then they didn't have sneakers. They had sandals and they were they didn't have paved, you know, roads. Um, they didn't have grass, you know, like sidewalks. They had dirt, grass, you know, gravel, all that. So your feet will eventually become dirty, right? So that's what the servant's role was, was to go over there and wash, you know, the guest's feet. And that is what Jesus did. He took the position of a servant. And now we also see in the book of Philippians that him being God himself didn't play that card and didn't say, okay, well, I'm God. So you guys are going to have to serve me. No. And later on, we're going to see why he did that. Okay. All right. So Interesting enough, okay, he said, um, he, he wrapped the towel around him and started washing his feet. Six, uh, verse six, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, 
what I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterwards you, you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. All right, so he came to Peter. He started washing his feet. And Peter said, no, 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 you're not washing my feet. Um, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus is like, well, what I'm doing, you're not going to fully understand now. You're going to understand later. But you need to allow me to wash your feet. Um, and he said, you will never wash my feet. Why? He understood that whatever role Jesus was taking, he himself had to take that role in the future. That is what he was being called to do. Whatever he saw Jesus doing, he was the one who had to, you know, continue on like that's the attitude that i should do like that's my job description as a servant of jesus as a follower of jesus as a disciple of jesus so anything i see jesus doing i myself have to do and i think that he saw this and he was like i don't want to be washing people's feet meaning i don't want to be a servant to people i don't want to be you know loving others above myself i don't want to be you know um, loving my neighbor as myself so that's why he was in a way objecting and saying no 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 jesus don't wash my feet because i know that I'm going to have to wash other people's feet and I don't want to. Like, Jesus, don't take that role is pretty much what he's saying. And then he says here, Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your feet, you have no share with me. He's like, if you, I don't wash your feet, then it's you're, you have no association with me. Okay, if you call yourself my disciple, you need to let me wash your feet so you know that this is a role that you have to take as well. So it's like, I guess it clicked. I don't know. It says, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. All right. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to be washed. Um, we're going to keep, uh, we're going to go all the way down to 14 because 14 really explains why even, you know, Jesus is doing all this and why Simon Peter was against it. So 14, Jesus says, if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. So that is what Simon Peter got. He's like, if, if Jesus is washing my feet, and that is something that I have to do. And Jesus is saying it. Okay. You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. All right. This is what you guys have to do. And this is not because you guys need to have a low self-esteem or because we consider you less. No, because this is your role. Just like a servant's role and a messenger or a master's role, they're not better than another. It's just the role that they have. And God and Jesus is calling us to take that role of a servant. Willingly take it. And he showed them. He showed us and he um, showed the disciples. And 17, it says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. All right, so it's not enough for us to know and understand that we are to take servant's role and to consider others above ourselves and to love on others as we love ourselves. It's not enough for us to know it. I feel like we all know it. I know it, okay? But he says, blessed are you if you do them, all right? If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So we will be blessed and we will understand of more of that attitude of Jesus and start um, already, yeah, becoming more like Jesus if we take on this role, which he did, okay? So again, it's not putting our spirits down saying, I'm a nobody, everybody. No, it's understanding our love, you know, the love that God has done or bestowed on us, that we are his sons, his daughters, but willingly taking that role that Jesus did, who being God himself said, I will take that role of a servant. And being the role of a certain, you're a servant means what we've been discussing, even in the, in the verse today, where it says we're supposed to count others, you know, or love on our neighbors like we do ourselves. Consider them, you know what I'm saying, um, more significant than ourselves. And Jesus did this beautifully. So we will be blessed. And even if we don't see it in this world, we will be blessed in future glories, which is in heaven, if we do obey God. You know, um, let us just not be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. And we see that in the book of James, that we need to be able to not only hear all these good things. And yes, I need to be a servant. Yes, I need to be, you know, love, I love on others. Like I feel like we do in our churches a lot of times. We need to act on it. So, yeah, I challenge you guys today how it is that I can be a servant to others. I struggle with that. This is not something that I'm just telling you guys. Guys, you have to do how I'm doing because this is how I do it. No, guys, this is something that is really difficult for me as well. And I feel like, sorry, I feel like at times it's something that I have to wrong, like write on my wall, right? Or like write it on my forehead. So every time I see myself in the mirror, it says, deny yourself. You know, others counter others. And for me, it just, oh man, it 
it's something that I'm struggling with. You know, I'm struggling with, you know, um, how do I say this? It's, it's easy not to be mean to people, right? It's easy to just, okay, I'm going to be nice to people, but it's going that extra step of considering them or in their needs more significant than, your, than yourselves is what gets to me. You know, I could be nice to people, I can love on people, I can show them love, but when it comes to really denying myself and putting myself to the side, it's something that I struggle with. There's days where it's better, but honestly, a lot of times since maybe in our churches we don't see it or we don't see our pastors or our leaders doing it, then it's hard for us because I'm like, well, if they're not doing it, then why should I be doing it? But again, we're being called to follow Jesus, not follow men. Our, our, our north, our following point should be the Bible. That is our reference, not what everybody else is doing, not what everybody else is saying. Here it doesn't say you follow others because other people are doing it or because you're seeing them how they're doing it. No, Jesus was like a trailblazer, meaning he was the one who set the standards and he did it. He says, because I'm doing it, you have to do it. That's what he told Peter. Because I'm doing it, you have to do it. So let's embrace it and let's cling on to him for him to give us, you know, grace and mercy and guide us through it every single day um, and how we can show others and show their needs or show that their needs is more significant than ourselves. All right, guys, that's about it. Um, I love, again, how the verse of the day kind of went hand in hand with what I was reading this morning. And um, I see that a lot. So whenever I do, I promise to share with you guys. Um, that's about it. Have an amazing day. Love you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.